there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and today I am not joined by any of our usual familiar voices. We are doing something a little bit different for this episode. It's a bit of an interlude between arcs. It's a prologue to arc two, if you will. And this prologue features a brand new character played by a brand new player to our campaign. You may know her from Total Party Chills Under the Table or Roll of Lore's In Too Deep. It's Liv! Welcome aboard, Liv! <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hey. Oh man, I'm so excited. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is uh this is something I've been like wanting, manifesting, if you will. Um, <laughs> so this is like, oh my god, this is so dope. So beyond excited. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> the super idol fairy came to grant your super idol wishes. Oh my god, truly. She was like, you, this one, <laughs> this is for you. And I was like, okay, let's get into it. Oh my <laughs> so, god. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I love music. I love idols. I am also a big fan of K-pop idols like T. But more importantly, I think I'm the number two magical girl stan. Um. I say number two because obviously you are number one, Aaron. I'm no. never going to disrespect you like that. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Everybody's magical girl love is amazing. Everybody's magical girl love is so strong because what's not to love? They're so great. So this was just like the perfect storm. I remember the first time Drac ever mentioned this. I was like, why haven't I been watching this already? Where has this <laughs> been my whole life or listening to, I guess? So um, I'm also a fan. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just a user of Super Idols RPG. <laughs> I'm a fan, too. I'm a fan. And you should check it out. <laughs> uh, and I, I, for one, knew that you would be absolutely perfect for this campaign, either as a permanent player or as a guest, because uh, we've played together before on a one-shot mm -hmm. stream of Glitter Hearts that Drax Group Friends Roll Dice ran a while back in the summertime, Yeah, which was also yeah. so much Magical Girl goodness. <laughs> Like, the ultimate Magical Girl game. It's fantastic. We also played in that game with Nathan, a.k.a. Uh, Zero Degrees. Exactly. So, yeah. So it's just, like, it's a family reunion. Like, it's Exactly. Great. We're going to get, like, a, a Glitter Hearts reunion happening on the show someday. I guarantee it. Oh, I already, like, I have plans in my mind. Like, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just rubbing my hands together here in front of the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, plans, uh, tricks, if you will, <laughs> secrets. Oh, indeed, and that may tie into what we're introducing today. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and speaking of jumping into things, we are actually jumping back in time just a little bit for this episode. We are winding back the clock to earlier in the day on the same Saturday that Rhythmics had their gig at the Stormlight. As that morning dawns, as the members of the Idol Club are fretting over their upcoming meeting with Tyra in the morning, elsewhere in the Fort McNally area, we find ourselves at a modest looking but fairly big house, and we hear in it the sizzle of sausage and eggs in the kitchen the delicious smells of breakfast wafting all through the house. And in one of the bedrooms of this big old house, just rousing from her slumber, we find... My name is Liv, she, they pronouns, and I'll be playing Lucia Moore, a grade 10 student at Fort McNally High School. Lucia is of black and Latina descent with a medium dark skin tone and black natural curly hair that she wears slicked back into two buns. She's rather on the short side, a small build. Her eyes are a very dark brown, and she has freckles across her nose and cheeks. She tends to wear fairly fashionable clothes, but more like a kid who's good at thrifting and not a kid who's buying designer brand names. Lucia has dealt her all of her life with that most debilitating of conditions, middle child syndrome. She's number three out of five children, and of the five of them, she has always felt like she was the only one who wasn't naturally gifted or skilled at their passions in life. Up until recently, she wasn't even sure she had a passion, at least not one that ever stuck anyway. Nothing really ever held her attention or drove her in the same way as her siblings, which has caused her no end of frustration and self-consciousness. But that all started to change within the last couple of years. 
Lucia has always liked music, thanks to her parents' diverse taste in music filling the home over the years. But it wasn't until she tapped into her dad's old hip-hop and R&B collection that things really clicked. This was it. This was the thing she loved. And this time, she was confident that she could totally make this kind of music herself someday. Luce's parents were admittedly hesitant when she first started talking about getting into rap and pursuing idolhood. Still, they trusted that their daughter's passion would lead her in the right direction. And sure enough, that passion has led to her mastering rapping and writing lyrics. She'll write verses for songs late into the night, in between classes, any free time she has really, no matter how much her siblings tease her. What's more, her super idol powers have awakened in recent months, and she spent her entire summer vacation perfecting the image of her new idol persona, the dazzling queen of illusions, Trixie. While Lucia loves her family deeply, she feels like she has something to prove to them, that she has found her calling, that she can work hard enough to be just as great as her siblings, if not greater. She may joke around and pretend others' words don't matter to her, but deep down, she knows that the super idol life is something she can't afford to be delinquent in. Yeah, thank you. So- oh, that was so good. <laughs> one take, <laughs> one take, really one take. Yeah. <laughs> 360 no scope. Hell yeah. Oh, killed it. <laughs> Damn, practicing on the Metro paid off. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Um. So we find uh, Lucia, who is just waking up on Saturday morning. It's maybe uh, eight-ish in the morning, a little bit before then, maybe. Uh, how, how does Lucia wake up? How, what kind of sleeper is she? Oh, she's like a deep sleeper. And I think she's like one of those people who like tries to start like in a ball, but just spread eagles by the time she wakes up. <laughs> Clothes <laughs> askew, hair wild. And she just kind of like sits up and rubs her eyes. Um, she used to be a like person who would totally sleep in late. But um, since she's gotten really serious about idol training, she knows that she has to wake up at least before nine. She tries for seven, but at least before nine. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to get all those those good like practice sessions and exercise routines in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, she's trying dancing. It's like she has rhythm, not her forte, but you know she knows she has to stretch in the morning. She's she's doing her best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, like vocal training and everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Stretch in the morning, vocal training. No, mama, I don't want milk. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> like, she's focused. <laughs> Occasionally, you might hear, like, the hilt of a broom tapping on the floor underneath you. Like, hey, keep it down up there. Oh, yeah, totally. When she's, like, getting a little bit too into it, doing, like, the jumping choreo, because she's definitely got, like, the video of the latest big idol group, and she's trying to, like, practice their dance moves in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just hear your mom calling. You're gonna break the rafters up there. Don't jump so hard. Uh, she definitely sticks her like head out. I'll fix them. <laughs> Just goes back. You better. I'll charge you for the repair bill. Uh, okay, mom. I'll stop. And, like softer beats. <laughs> you you can hear her laughing. It's not like she's actually mad at you. <laughs> no. <laughs> But yeah, so she wakes up, kind of like rubs the sleep out of her eyes, takes a deep breath, sits there for a second, and then gets up. (laughs) Yes, and you can smell all of the breakfast wafting into your room. It smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she like, you know, like throws, like gets herself at least a little bit together. She's still in her pajamas, but you know, a little bit together and definitely rushes out, jumps down the last few stairs whatever it takes to get to the table as soon as possible. (laughs) Yeah, and you can hear, like, feet running behind you as well as your siblings are trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You've started to wake up even earlier than them, uh, and they've taken notice. Yes, and I think, like, the second she hears footsteps, she, I think there's, like, a pantry door. I think she, like, throws it open behind her, so it blocks the (laughs) hall. You get the, like, anime, like, running into the flat surface, and then, like, the door pulls back, and they're, like, flat (laughs) in the, like, pose (laughs) where they stopped. (laughs) I think she just, like, throws a little peace sign over her shoulder, keeps running, (laughs) slides into the kitchen. I'm gonna say that's your younger brother, Anthony, uh, Tony, that you caught there with the Mm -hmm. (laughs) door. 
Move faster, Tony. Come on, let's go. Mom's not going to wait. You got my nose that time. Oh my god. And he, he runs after you. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's giggling. She's very proud of that one. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like flops down in her seat. To your consternation, your older brother, the eldest brother, Mateo, actually is already at the table because he has already been awake since like five in the morning. She just rolls her eyes. <laughs> he gives you like a light wave. He's got like a book open at the table with him. He's uh, very, very studious. <laughs> um, she sees that and then pulls out her phone and starts like typing in her notes. And I think like she's kind of humming like a little melody, you know, low enough that it's casual, but loud enough that he could definitely hear it. As she's, like, typing um, her latest idea in her phone notes. <laughs> and you can see a, a, a wry grin over the top of the book that he's reading. It's like, what you got there, little sis? Mm, just some new idea. What are you working on? Oh, uh, you know, just the, like, millionth chapter in a row on the medulla oblongata, you know? Just all that, like, dense medical stuff. You wouldn't be interested, I feel like. No, it sounds pretty boring. Um, it really sucks for you. Um, and she just like goes yeah. back to typing, like mentally thinking, like, what the heck is a mandula oblongata? Like, she pulls up Google to try to figure it out, but like <laughs> as subtly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of gives you a little bit of a chuckle. He says, "Sorry, I'm. I might be a bit of a zombie this morning. I've been. Uh, I didn't sleep much last night. I've been up pretty early. I know that's." broken record at this point but you know how stuff goes well i mean you could see if there are any classes that were like in like in the afternoon you don't have to take as many credits as you do uh, that's the thing though that they need all of these credits in order to get to where i want to be what i where i want to work um insert specific medical courses that definitely aaron has researched before this <laughs> all these like <laughs> extensive pre-med courses and i think it's like He's going on, like, Lucia's eyes are just glazing over, because, like, we've been through this before. <laughs> I don't need to bore you with yeah. the, the boring details that are conveniently too complicated to come up with on the spot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think she just, like, kind of rolls her eyes and just like, yeah, it sounds really hard, Teo. It sounds like you're really going through it. Yeah, it doesn't help that, like, Delia was messaging me again last night. Like, I know, like, she's worried about her brother like i i think i told you like delia's brother went missing recently right like uh, what's his name drew i think i think you've mentioned that he was like a oh my god what fort is it again yeah like i don't know fort mckinley or something like that i don't know some other school in the area and i i know it's she's going through a hard time with that right now but like she's been messaging me like non-stop all week and it's just a lot to keep up with on top of everything else yeah it's like scary though that he just like went missing yeah and he didn't run away or anything i i don't know he's i don't know to be honest he seems like the sort who might have that's kind of what i'm thinking it might have been but i don't want to say that to her yeah no you definitely shouldn't say that to her that's rude he hangs out with like I, I, like a rock golem girl or something like that. I don't know. Like he's he's in with a weird crowd, is what I'm saying. Rock golem. I think there's a girl like that at my school. Is it? Oh wait, is there? Yeah, like really, really tall, like legit built like a brick wall, which is like even a little bit more ironic because she's literally made of rock. But I think I've seen her around. I don't think she's oh. my grade though. Yeah, well, if you see her around, maybe, like, ask if she knows, like, where Drew is or something, because, like, t t tell her his sister is worried to shit, all right? Okay, yeah, I guess I can do that for you. All right. <laughs> anyway, I'm done complaining at you, I promise. I'll let you <laughs> enjoy your breakfast and your song. Thanks. Um, and she just, like, goes back to typing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's at this point that Tony finally arrives at the table, and he's joined shortly after by your other siblings, the youngest little Ava in elementary school, and the second eldest sibling, Lorena, a.k.a. Ren, and they are coming in. 
to sit down. Everybody's sort of gathering around the table. There's the five of you and your parents are just putting the finishing touches on breakfast for everybody. <laughs> when Tony goes to sit down, uh, Lucia reaches out with her foot and like kind of kicks his chair just <laughs> enough so that he would fall. <laughs> I'm just going to, I want that to work, so I'm not even going to try and think of a move for that. <laughs> <laughs> he he doesn't, like, outright fall, but, like, he does, like, stumble and go, like, oh, I go, just, just, God, 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 then he <laughs> gives you, like, a little punch in the arm. Like, yeah, even as he punches her in the arm, Lucia turns and just like, Ava, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, it wasn't me. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. It was sure. Tony. It was Tony. The mommy, oh, mama, you saw. You saw it. It was definitely Tony. It was Tony. No, and, <laughs> and your dad's like, "Okay, everybody, calm down." In the second, like her dad walks in, Lucia just like beams and just is like, "Hi, dad. Good morning. Hi, mom. Good morning." Like perfect little <laughs> angel. <laughs> he smiles and says, "Lucia, don't hit your brother. <laughs> he hit me. Sorry, Tony. Don't hit your sister. <laughs> she tried to kick the chair out from. I don't care. It's." Breakfast time, wartime truce is called. Everybody settle down. Yeah, Lucia is so proud of herself. <laughs> <laughs> so this this rambunctious bunch all manages to coalesce around the breakfast table eventually without tearing each other apart. Although not that they really would. <laughs> it's all in good fun. No. True, true, true. At least for Lucia, most of the time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She can dish it. Can she take it? Mm. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how she rolls eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Something tells me there could be like a provoke move at some point during this episode. I definitely think so. I definitely think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, so everybody sits down. Everybody starts to fill up their plates. And uh, you're starting to eat. Um, so are you still basically just on your phone? Are you singing your song still? She definitely started out as just, like, a weird way to kind of, like, jab at Mateo. But I think towards the end of it, she actually had kind of, like, figured out, like, a cool rhyme that she was, like, really into and was, like, finishing it up. But she has been yelled at a couple of times before about no music at the table. So Mm. (laughs) Um, she puts her phone down for now. (laughs) She already got away with one trick. So... (laughs) She got a couple in this morning. I think she'll probably be pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Uh, Next to you, Ren yawns and shovels some sausage into their mouth. And they look over to you and like, so you got like a thing later today, right? Like that concert thing? Yeah, I mean, it seems like interesting. It's the idol club at school, which I don't know, like... I'm kind of hoping for bees, like bees two, electric buzz, like buzzaloo. I don't know. Like, I'm really hoping something like that happens because that'd be really funny. Oh, you know, that girl was really badly hurt, though. Okay. Okay. That wasn't funny. But the rest of it was kind of funny. And the, 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 like, dagger stuff was kind of cool. But, like, I don't know. I felt bad for, like, what's her name? Karen? Yeah. Yeah. No, like, that's a tragedy for sure. Like. She seems nice. I hope she's okay. Yeah, I actually like, don't know. She's been around at the school like kind of as long as I have, but I've never really gotten to talk to her or anything, so I don't really know what her deal is. Um, s- still sucks, though. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully she's okay. But I'm going to the show anyway. Yeah, I kind of hope you do. Like, I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised you haven't already joined the Idol Club, to be honest. Like, with you being so into everything, like, I, I'm i kind of surprised you didn't, like, jump at the chance first day of school. I mean, like, idol groups are cool or whatever, but I want to be an independent artist. You know what I mean? Like, I want to sit out here, do my own thing, have my backup dancers and everything. It's going to be great. It's going to be so awesome. In fact, you should check out the song that I was writing. Like, it's got the sickest beat and it just, it just doesn't work in my vision to have a group. You know, I guess fair, but like, I don't know, even like a solo artist usually has like a team they work with on the back end, right? Well, yeah, on the back end. I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, there's probably like a lot of room for like clashing personalities and styles and whatnot. I mean, I I guess I kind of get it, but I just I don't know. It feels like it'd be fun. Like, it seems like the kind of thing you'd have fun with. 
Lucia kind of like tosses her hair over her shoulder and she's like, well, if this family can barely handle me, I don't know how any group could. Um, (laughs) And they laugh. Also a fair point. (laughs) But I mean, I guess I could consider it. Yeah. See how the show goes. At least it'll be good to go and support your school's club. Uh, I don't know. They, They seem like a cool group from what I've seen of them. Like the bees thing aside. Do you want to come with? Uh, maybe I don't know. I I did promise I'd go see a friend later. Like we were gonna go have like an art jam or something. Uh, Lucia tries so hard not to roll her eyes, <laughs> um, and just like, yeah, okay, Ren, sure. Oh, <laughs> they give a little like pout, like a very exaggerated pout. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> What? I, I, I'm I really looking forward to this. We're going to get like a big canvas out. We're going to like splash some paint everywhere. It's going to be great. Okay, Picasso. Okay, Banksy, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> but she just kind of cracks a smile and just like, but like, make one of those little time lapse videos and send it to me, I guess. Uh, you know, not a bad idea. I'll I'll see if somebody has got like, like a tripod we can set up or something. Yeah. Might be good to actually get your art out there. Oh, God, I'm so bad with the social media stuff. Like, you got to get me on that it's, at some point. Like, I know the places <laughs> to go. I just posting consistency, branding, hashtag. What is it all? <laughs> Lucia just like shakes her head and just like, I don't know what you would do without me. Like, honestly, what would any of us do without you, Luce? What would any of us do? <laughs> that is true. Tony shoots you a glare from across the table. <laughs> uh i think she just like has just the biggest little proud grin like chin up probably like winks at tony (laughs) because i guess that's her victim of the day (laughs) you can see ava like tittering to herself like (laughs) (laughs) i love this family already anyway (laughs) Uh, but yeah I, i hope you have fun though definitely tell me how it was maybe i'll make it to the next one they do yeah Definitely. I mean, there's always something cool going on at the Starlight, so we could go. I could, like, actually introduce you to some good music for once. It'll be a good time. Hey, now, I, I have, I'll have, I have, excuse me, I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll have you know mm-hmm. I'm turning into Foghorn Leghorn all of a sudden. <laughs> and I, <laughs> <laughs> I take offense to that remark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lucy is just shaking her head because in her eyes... No matter what, the only people in the house that have good taste in music are her and her parents. Everybody else is garbage. And yes, that includes Ava, who probably listens to Kids Bop. I don't know. <laughs> but Yeah, what do, what do kids even listen to nowadays? Whatever, it doesn't matter. She could be listening to Beethoven and Lucy is over here like trash. <laughs> and I imagine that Ren is like a very artsy type. So they probably are listening to like a lot of like uh, weird experimental music from Bandcamp or whatever. Oh, 100%. Like, Ren doesn't look out anywhere outside of, like, weird SoundCloud beats that have, like, really long names that are just more <laughs> sentences than titles. 100%. <laughs> like, Ren, you could stand to have something with a beat for once, God. <laughs> Honestly. And, like, the weird, like, vocalization screaming that's playing underneath the instruments is not a beat. It's just not a beat. Oh, it's just, it's so affecting though. If you just like, if you're listening to it like in the dark and like staring at the ceiling and like everything is just like swirling around in your head, you really just, you really like feel what the artist is trying to get at, you know? I swear, my mom must have accidentally replaced your lullabies with scraping chalkboard sounds as a baby. Your mom, Gabriella, puts a finger to her lips and was like, I don't know if I, there was that one <laughs> time, did I leave like a noise? track on in the baby room she's like almost like she's sincerely trying to remember <laughs> <laughs> to be fair she's had a lot of kids so like you know <laughs> was that tao's pregnancy or Ren's? <laughs> <laughs> see and tao like kind of gives her like a horrified look on <laughs> well it's probably not tao since he's you know so smart and he has to rub it in everybody's face so it probably wasn't tao but <laughs> I, I, I'm know. not, I'm not. We don't know. Science has yet to figure it out. He protests like, I'm not smart. I just spend a lot of time on things. It's, it's oh, just in the last couple God. of years, you started to figure that out, Luz. She, uh, she lets that one hang and just, uh, 
<clears throat> anyway, um, yes, I will be going to the show tonight. Thank you very much for asking, Ren. If anybody else has any questions about my busy schedule, please let me know. It's going to be filled with practice today. So, and I think she like looks at Ava. Quiet in the house. Thank you. Aww. <laughs> She's kind of had her phone out under the table the whole time and it kind of sheepishly lowers the volume on whatever video she's watching. <laughs> Kids do watch videos at like extremely loud volumes. <laughs> they do. She's watching like one of those like kids like dinosaur programs. She's totally in like a dinosaur phase right now. Oh my god, I love her. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh I think if that's it, Lucia like gets up probably because she's kind of a good kid, at least mm. to the people that she cares about. So I think she like gets up, grabs her plate, grabs anything that's like empty from her parents, and takes it to the kitchen. But nobody else. <laughs> As you leave, you catch Teo giving you kind of a, uh, kind of a, a apologetic look. Like he didn't mean for that remark to come across that harshly, but he doesn't know how to say that. Are his like books still spread out? Yeah, like well, not as much since now he's also got breakfast in front of him, but he's still got like a book out. Mm -hmm. Um, as she passes by, I think Lucia like squeezes his shoulder to kind of like kind of like a it's okay, Aww. but pulls out like a couple of his bookmarks from his textbook <laughs> as she. Passes by. Yeah, you see the, the like smile come up on his face and uh, until he realizes he looks down and is like, hey. <laughs> but by that time, you're already out of the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you think you're going to spend your day generally after this breakfast? It's Saturday. The world is your oyster. What does Lucia do on a Saturday? Oh, man. Um... Gosh. I mean, we kind of talked about how, like, she probably does do a little bit of practicing, but, like, she's still a kid. She's still, like, 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So I think at, like, some part of the day, I think she might, like, go kind of, like, hang out around town. I think she, like, has her head bud, like, airpods, like, headphones. There we go. <laughs> um, on, like, just kind of listening to music. Maybe goes to like the local record shop or like music shop to see like what's going on, who's the hottest idol lately, who came out with like a new album that maybe she hasn't gotten like that print of it yet. See what's going on around town because it, it's Cadence, so there's always something hot going on with idols. Oh, for sure. You drop in, they're playing like the latest Starry Night Sky stuff on like a like a monitor or something as you walk in. Uh, there are flyers up for acts like the Bomb Bomb Bros, and their posters have like clues about where to find their next secret shows on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, um, is there any zero degrees like merch or anything around? Oh yes, definitely. There's like a clothing section, and like there are those synthwave sweaters that mm -hmm. that Zero Degrees has in his merch line. I think she like kind of double takes at that because like she's heard of Zero Degrees, he's cool or whatever. He's not like big out there, but I think she like double takes it and is like, well, cut that up a little bit, cut the top off. That'd be a pretty cool outfit. And so she grabs a sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah. Plus it's fall. It's getting to be like sweater weather. Yeah, exactly. Um, it looks like a, I imagine like those uh, cups from the 80s, like the teal and purple, like that kind of vibe. Oh so yes. I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, <laughs> but like icy. So I think she's like, okay, yeah, like this, like baggy jeans, cool shoes. This is going to be a killer fit. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes. So she, she gets that. Um, I think she like takes a picture of like the next Bomb Bombo show, like little clues so she can decipher it later. I think she tries to be low key about it. Like she's not gonna walk around with like somebody's like like Starry Night Sky's face on a sweatshirt. But um Just she a bit definitely more tasteful has... like stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know like if you know what you're looking for, you'll see a mark of a band or a person like somewhere, mm -hmm. but it's not like in your face. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She has, like, a tasteful jean jacket that, like, has buttons and pins and stuff. Um, so she's kind of cultivating those items because they can never know how big of a fan she actually is. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. I just want the best for her, I think. Mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's figuring it out. She's 15, 16 years old. She's figuring it out. <laughs> she's figuring out how to balance genuine enthusiasm with doesn't care about anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because caring about things is, is for losers. <laughs> caring about things is gross and it gives you acne and we're not doing that here. Yeah, no, she she's the coolest kid in town by her own standards. <laughs> of course. But yeah, I think it's just kind of like that. Like, a little treat herself day, which I think is her Saturday routine. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Do you think she meets up with any friends? Or is she like, this is more of a just for her kind of day? Oh, I hadn't thought about, like, friends that she had. I think she might, like, meet up with friends for, um, I don't know, like, coffee or something. Cadence has to have, like, some music-themed boba shop, so whatever that is. Ooh. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it seems like that kind of a town that has, like, hip little <laughs> restaurants. So she probably meets up with some friends. Dang it. I, I was trying to think, like, we had just mentioned the Bomb Bomb Bros, and I feel like that should lend itself to a boba pun, but I can't think of a good one. I mean, I guess simply just Bomb Bomb Boba. Maybe. Or at least, like, maybe not the shop, but that's definitely a drink that they have, and it's all, like orange and mango and something in there to make it kind of red <laughs> and like lychee boba that pops yeah not me thinking of brandy <laughs> that sounds so delicious though oh my yeah. it's been too long since i last had boba i do indulge sometimes and awesome that sounds like a lovely little day out and i guess you would probably eventually find yourself heading back home for the day after a nice day to yourself and then with your friends over lunchtime it sounds like you're feeling pretty good about yourself and maybe you'll just get to spend like a little bit more time at home with your practice and whatnot before you head out for the show later in the evening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah definitely like pop in check in on like the siblings and stuff because ren's gone for the day it sounds like but you know yeah, Ren went to their paint night. Teo is mm -hmm. now gone back out to the college campus to do more work out there because, of course, mm -hmm. Tony, I think, is probably glued to like his Xbox or something at this point. Same, same. <laughs> and Ava is otherwise engaged. She's got all of her little like dinosaur toys out and is arranging like a little scene. So she's very into that. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, I don't think Lucia is so mean that she would, like, knock them over. I no. think she, like, looked in, saw, considered, and then was like, I'll <laughs> no. get her next time. <laughs> like, something else. <laughs> and just, like, heads up. Probably, like, grab some cool music from Dad or something. Go practice. Have a good time. Focus on her idol stuff, because we got to get this down. We have to get this on lock. She's not quite sure what she's supposed to be doing. She does not have a management team, but she's going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> there are more than enough Idle Tube tutorials out there that she has to figure it out eventually. That's the logic. She has an extensive, extensive subscription list to different Idle Tubes, like different like how tos. She has like playlists dedicated to like these are my vocal warm ups. These are like how to write beats and stuff like that. She's extensive. I don't think she's very good at writing beats. That's the one that she's like, I'm going to figure that out one day. This whole music thing, I'm going to figure it out one day later. <laughs> <laughs> but she got the words down. That's important. Yeah, she got the words down, which I think was kind of like a surprising thing. She has never been like one for literature and never thought like poetry would be her thing. But like writing lyrics is kind of it's literally a form of poetry so yeah it's all a framing thing yeah yeah and i think the idea of like oh this is something i'm actually going to perform not something i'm writing for somebody to read was the thing that made it click and helped her a lot nice i think in that case you probably find yourself practicing with maybe like one of these idle tube videos that's teaching you how to create a beat for your lyrics and trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to create something for lyrics that you were working on earlier when you hear a, a soft knock at your door. Um, I think she, like, stops, kind of considers. I don't think the younger siblings knock, so... <laughs> yeah, no, the knock comes from high enough up the door that it's one of your parents. Yeah, and just come in. And the door opens, and uh, it is your dad, Andre. Andre. I think she smiles and is just like, hey, dad, what's up? Hey, Luce, uh, not too much. Uh, I just wanted to come in and uh, and check on you. Sounds like you're you're working on something cool in here. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think she like hits play, but then kind of like makes a face because I don't think it's exactly what she thought it would be. <laughs> no, he enjoys it regardless, though. He's like, you got a good ear. I got to tell you, like, I guess you're working from my old collection, so I shouldn't be surprised. But <laughs> you're coming up on something really, really special, I feel like. I think like at first when she had like heard her own thing play back, instant disappointment, just like kind of face screwed up, kind of like almost like getting angry. But I think the second she hears her dad's words, it all melts away. And she just like looks out at him with like this big smile. and just like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I'll figure it out. I got it. Oh, I'm sure you will. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, your your mom and I were a little a little worried at first about all this, but you're showing like so much passion for this. You've been working so hard. We're just really excited for you. I think you're doing so, so good so far. Thanks, Dad. Mm. Uh, I, I did come in to check on you because I uh, after breakfast this morning, I didn't know what to say at the time, but I just wanted to make sure you were OK after what Teo said. That was a little harsh of him. I did talk to him a little bit earlier about that. It's fine. He's probably just all grumpy because, like, you know, trying to be a doctor or whatever is a big deal. Yeah, but that's no excuse to snap at your younger sister. He knows better. I just... I don't know. This is, like, the one time I've ever, like, really cared about something, you know? Like, really, really wanted to try. And so, I don't know, it just bothers me when the others act like this is just some other thing that I'm going to quit again or this is just like I don't know the first time it's clicking like I'm not stupid like I know things take effort yes your your mother and I I can tell very clearly that this is something important for you I know that you've had a bit of a hard time figuring out what you're passionate about but I think we haven't seen this kind of spark from you about something before and we're we're honestly just so glad to see it like not that we wouldn't still love you regardless but it's just seeing you happy makes us happy um and she just kind of beams proudly and just like yeah no and i know that this is like a really, really competitive thing. But I, I promise you, like I've been trying, I've been trying to learn like dancing and making music and you know I can rap and I'm like kind of a decent singer, you know, and I, I've got the singing like I'm, I'm working on it. And yeah, well, let let us know if you need us to like uh, hire any of those tutors we talked about. Maybe I know that you were a little hesitant about that, but I yeah, it, it could help. It could help. I mean, maybe, but Just trust me when I tell you that, like, I have got this, like, in a world full of, like, all these super idols and everything. I promise you, I know that I can do this. I know you can, too. And I just want to reassure you, you don't have to be good at absolutely all of it. The reason I love a lot of that old R&B is just because those artists are just so good at that specific thing that they do at the the at the rhymes and the flow and the lyrics and everything like that. They don't have to dance or shoot sparks from their fingers. They've got something they can do. They do it really well. Just because they don't do everything, that doesn't make them any less special. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was like a different time. Like it was so much easier to be a solo artist back then, you know? Ugh. I don't even know how to describe to you how it was when all that started to change. It was, ugh. And he gives a little bit of a shudder. That's why it's kind of comforting to go back in and listen to them. Yeah, that makes sense. There's something different. Mm-hmm. I would be lying if I said I wasn't still worried about the powers side of all this. I know mm-hmm. you mentioned a little bit about something. I think he, he gives you a little bit of a... Uh, a concerned look like I don't think you've probably shown him much of your powers but he and your mother know that you have them at this point I don't think your siblings know quite yet I don't know know if you're ready to tell them that yet yeah I mean it's a new thing it happened during summer vacation so she's uh she's working up to it you know we gotta talk about loose (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) yeah yeah so he doesn't know exactly fully like what your powers can do but he knows that you've just gotten some and he that 
obviously is making him a little bit worried about what that entails for like other types of idols with powers that you might encounter someday. Yeah, very, I mean, you know what? A concerned parent should. <laughs> it's logical. <laughs> um, she kind of like sings her shoulders down sort of sheepishly and shrugs. And it's just like, I mean, I guess like, I don't know. It's not very offensive, but I would put on a great show. That I have no doubt of. It's not you I'm worried about. It, well, I'm not in that way anyway. I just, even like that video that came out of your school last week was enough to make my blood run cold. Yeah. I mean, I think they're going to be okay. I mean, there's like all that technology. Like, you know what? I was actually reading in this magazine yesterday about like this company, Crimson Signal, and they have some really, really awesome tech that I think was really... (laughs) <laughs> and he he, right. he rolls his eyes as soon as you mention crimson signal he's like oh god don't even get me started on crimson signal uh, <laughs> i'm just glad to finally be done dealing with all of their permits and zoning issues down at the planning department now that their stupid fancy new building is all done okay i mean one true it's nice to have you back home two the building i saw the design kind of ugly Kind of not cute. Like, we get the point. <laughs> right? <laughs> he, like, his, he, his face lights up at that. Like, it's the most eyesore building I've seen in the city in a long time. <laughs> Giant red sea. It doesn't, you can't even tell it's a sea looking on it, facing it from the front. So what's the point even? Yeah, it just looks like a weird curve. Yeah, it's just like this weird red blob in the middle of the street. It's, it's an eyesore. <laughs> But even if they're not very good at designing buildings, they have some really, really awesome tech. And I wanted to show you and mom so that you can, like, see the safety precautions, you know? Uh, well, that that would make me feel a little bit better to know sort of what is protecting my daughter out there. I mean, Ren was talking about the Idol Club, too. And I guess, at least while I'm in high school, I could look into working with them. So then I have a team or whatever. I think Ren had a good idea there, honestly. I think being in a group of people who share your interests like that would be good for you. I know you want to do this yourself, um, but I think joining a group like that doesn't mean that you have to give up on that. If anything, learning to work with a group first might help you learn what makes you stand out in a group, what makes you a star in the crowd. Well, I mean, look at me. And she, like, flashes a little smile. (laughs) Not that it isn't completely obvious already, he he says with a chuckle. (laughs) Your mom and I both know this from experience. Learning to work with others is an invaluable skill. It's helped us both throughout our careers, throughout our lives. It's don't underestimate the value of learning to play well with others. Fine, I'll go to the show and I will see if they can keep up with me. You know? I wonder if I should go with you. I do kind of, I am curious to know kind of what precautions are in place for this kind of thing. He raises an eyebrow. Would it be too uncool for your old man to go to a rock concert with you? See, on one hand, yes, absolutely. But on the other hand, I mean, I guess it would be good. And like, you do have good taste in music, so you could see if they're even worth my time. And. You could get a ride home afterwards. You wouldn't have to take the bus home at night. That is so true. You are, God, your mind. Okay, you're going. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly, I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious to see what these kids from your school can do, too, and if they've learned anything from the incident on Saturday. I hope so. And you catch a look in his eye that he might also be interested in going just to, like, possibly protect you if something goes wrong. Oh, Dad. <laughs> um, she just kind of gives him a smile and is just like, okay, so seven o'clock tonight at the Stormlight. Be ready. Do not dress like a dad. And we're good. I'll be sure to wear only my finest polo shirt. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Big hearty laugh from your t- <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Um... <laughs> Before we end this scene, uh, I just want to actually mm-hmm. sneak this in as well. Um, tying into some of Andre's words to you about playing well with others. 
because I have to sneak these into every solo session I do, apparently. Um, he's going to try and shift your labels. <laughs> ah, okay. He's trying to shift your mundane up and your danger down. Mundane up and danger down. I mean... He wants to increase the stat that would be good for <laughs> interacting with other people. That's true. That makes sense. Um... Yeah, like I love my dad or whatever. I'll let him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mundane two, danger negative one. All right. Oof. <laughs> well, certainly you can't be that dangerous if you're literally going to a show with your dad. That's so true. <laughs> In his polos, <laughs> yes. like no danger whatsoever. <laughs> Um, I will shift my labels to mundane, negative one danger. And yeah, I think she like turns back to kind of whatever she was working on. But I definitely think like she has a little smile at the idea of like going and showing her dad this side of what the music industry is now, her place in it, what she wants to do. Because I do think her parents are a little bit more old school. Which is awesome, and she appreciates that, but she's very excited to show this part of her world. Yeah, and I think he's very excited for seeing this as well, honestly. Oh yeah! (laughs) (laughs) Hey there, everyone! It's me, Erin, your GM, your host, your professionally distanced entertainment provider. (laughs) Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to episode 20, Lucia, which is effectively the prologue of arc two and episode zero, if you will. And with new arcs come some new changes. Um, I've been wanting to do some minor format changes for the show for a little while, and arc two seemed like the best time to bring those in. First and foremost being, well, we're gonna have a little break in these episodes, (laughs) just like this one coming up. Um, Just so that I have a dedicated spot to post show updates and announcements and Patreon stuff and, most importantly, podcast promos, like the one for the good folks over at Roll Gay Roleplay, who you'll be hearing after this. Um, I just felt like the podcasts we want to promote deserve (laughs) better than the literal butt end of an episode, so (laughs) I really do want more people to hear the shows that we promo, so I'm going to give them some better airspace, so there you go. (laughs) Also, wanted to let you know that we have a couple of fun bonuses coming to the podcast feed in the next few weeks. First off, we are going to have our very first Q&A episode coming up. Yay! Um, I wanted to wait to announce this until after Liv debuted on the show so that they could join us for it. And now that they have, we are very excited to talk to you all about arc one of the show, what's coming up for arc two, and what goes into making the show in general. You know, all that good stuff. So if you have a question that you would like answered in that episode, you can either add us on Twitter at SuperIdolsRPG, you can email us at SuperIdolsRPG at gmail.com, or you can post questions to the comment section of the YouTube upload for this episode. Please keep your questions fairly simple and try not to send more than two questions max since we want to make sure we have time to read everyone's questions. So again, yeah, send any questions you have about Arc 1 to at SuperIdolsRPG on Twitter, SuperIdolsRPG at gmail.com, or the YouTube comments section for episode 20. The Q&A episode is not going to have a set release date, bonus episodes just kind of drop whenever they're ready, um, so <laughs> don't be surprised if you, if you get that fun little treat in your feed coming up soon. Uh, The second bonus is something that I've been wanting to post for a while, and it's a special feed drop produced by our good friends over at the Otherware podcast. Lee, who voiced Vape from Vaporwave, is the GM and producer over at Otherware, and has been just a really big supporter of Super Idols for a while now. And back in February, he produced a whole ass fan audio recreation of one of Starry Night Sky's instructional YouTube videos hosted by a special guest from the Otherware universe, Bobby Tiger. If you're listening to this on YouTube right now, this special will only be posted to our audio podcast feed, since I feel weird about making YouTube ad revenue off of someone else's creation. So if you want to listen to that, head on over to our podcast feed within the next couple of weeks and be sure to check that out. 
We'll also be including a promo for Otherwear today because you really should just be listening to them as well if you're not already. Lee and Eric are both fantastic in it. That whole crew is just fantastic. Just listen, 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 listen to the show, please. Trust me, you'll be very glad that you did. Last couple things before I let you go. Uh, for ARC 2 going forward, the previously on Super Idols RPG segment will be changing a bit as well. It's um, getting more difficult for me to pull clips for that the more episodes that I have to sort through. So that's going to be changing to purely a voiceover based recap going forward. And of course, I would like to say thank you to our featured VIP patrons for this episode. So thank you very much to Blake1995, Eric Kune, Lady Plague, and Matthew F. for helping to make this show possible. Your contributions help me commission art, like the gorgeous piece that was featured in the YouTube version of episode 19 by Gabriela Serales. It also helps me pay for stuff like transcripts. Yes, I've finally been able to budget for new episode transcripts again. We just posted transcripts for episodes 3 and 4 to the website, and I'm hoping to get a new transcript posted there each month from here on out. So thank you again to our patrons for helping to make that possible. If you want to support the creation of these things, you can head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise, and toss us a couple bucks a month. There may be some changes to the rewards coming up since I've not been able to keep up with a lot of Patreon posting at the moment. But regardless, you'll still get access to a whole backlog of some exclusive bonus content in there, like before and after session talk for certain episodes, um, uncut episodes that show what our sessions are like before editing and sound design goes into them, and also our session zeros for each arc, which includes a brand new session zero that we recorded when Liv joined our cast. So that should be available on the Patreon now if you're listening to this right now, so go give it a listen if you're interested in hearing that. Oh, excuse me, my voice is starting to give out. I'm kind of recovering a bit from a minor surgery this week, so I've been in bed for a lot of this week. You can tell in my voice. Ah. Um, but that's probably a good, good a sign as any that this break has gone on for far too long. <laughs> Hopefully future ones will be a bit shorter than this. I'm sure you'd like to get back to the episode and see how things go for Lucia and her dad. So enjoy the promos and enjoy the rest of the episode. Rules light. Gay heavy. Knees weak. Mom spaghetti. Listen to us truly earn the explicit podcast tag on Roll Gay Role Play. Where we roll with sass and kick some ass. Our dysfunctional party isn't afraid to get our hands dirty. Feel free to interpret that however you want. So if violence is on your gay agenda. Come join our campaign at Roll Gay Role Play. And, and may Yonsei, Yonsei be, be with, with you. you. What if someone told you there isn't just one world? What if they told you that your reality isn't the only one? What if they said that there are infinite realities? Infinite Earths. Infinite versions of yourself. Oh, it's a little bit different. What if they gave you the chance to explore them all? Welcome to Otherware. Otherware is a monthly masks, a new generation actual play podcast. Learn more on Twitter at otherwarepod or at otherware.lawofnames.com. Otherware is not responsible for any side effect drifting produced by listening to this podcast. So the both of you get ready in only your finest, <laughs> finest of outfits. He lied about the polos. So he does go in like... Not like a full-on dad shirt, but in just like a nice like dress shirt that wouldn't like super out of place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, she definitely throws on the new um zero degree sweatshirt that she had on that I do think she kinda like cut the neck off of to like make it hang, kinda aged it a little bit. She uh apparently cares a lot about aesthetics, but that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know that something with all those synth, like, neon colors is going to look so good under all the, like, flashing yeah. lights and neon at the stormlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. Like, does some, like, bright makeup. She is ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> your dad coordinates with your mom to make sure that she can get Ava into bed on time and, like, handle the rest mm -hmm. of the kids and whatnot as uh, the two of you head out. I think you have mm -hmm. a quick dinner before you leave. It's <laughs> probably... Somewhat along the same lines as earlier, except Teo and Ren aren't there. Mm -hmm. It's not terribly remarkable, I think. Yeah, I think before she leaves, though, she, like, 
ruffles both Tony and Ava's hair. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't pick on Aww. them. Just ruffles their hair and leaves. And Tony gives you like a, a, he's trying to give you a sour look, but it's hard to hide that he like actually appreciates it. <laughs> She's picked on him enough today. You know, there yeah, can yeah. be peace. <laughs> yeah. He goes back to his fortnights or whatever it is. Yeah, whatever kids do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the call of duties. The duties of call. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Ma- Master Chief <laughs> all and all his friends. An- Master Chief and all his friends. All I do is play Hades and Animal Crossing. So <laughs> <laughs> I think he does too, yeah, honestly. He just tries not to let anyone catch him. <laughs> this family of just like, I have to be the coolest person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i think she goes i think like she puts on i don't know like some playlist that i think is like definitely more throwbacks it's her peace offering her dad's gonna take go to this show with her she's gonna give him some like cool music that he likes i'm sure yeah yeah and they're just like jamming in the car <laughs> you guys probably both like sing and rap the words along with the songs it's a good time oh, yeah, totally totally yeah. Uh, you pull up at the Stormlight. Parking is a nightmare in the Neon District, but you make it there eventually somehow anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the closer they're getting, like, in line, like, she is just, like, bouncing on her toes. Like, she tried to play it off earlier, but now that, like, she's there and she's in the atmosphere, she's like, oh, my God, yes. Because I don't know how many, like, super idol shows she gets to go to. So that's also just, like, an experience within itself. Mm-hmm. It's a big event. Oh, yeah. And you hear lots of people, like, chattering around you. You see a few people holding flyers with the Rhythmix name on them, and talking about, like, the video from Saturday and, like, who are these people even? What's going on? Mm-hmm. They want to see more of what the deal is, especially since it's on, like, the main stage all of a sudden. And I think, like, even she's kind of confused, like, main stage? Like, a high school idol club? Main stage? Okay. And you start to get the the sense that, like, as you hear more people, like, talking around you, you catch snippets of the name Sagittaria as well. How up on the beat of Fort MacArthur do you think you are? Uh, Fort MacArthur who? Do not know them. Um, she definitely does, but she does not. Uh, she does not see. But I think, like, she's, like, remembering, thinking, like, Sagittaria, Sagittaria. Like, thinking back to the video, and then puts it together, and... I think she kind of, like, looks at her dad. I don't think she tells him, because I think if he knew that this was going to be a battle of the bands, they would leave. <laughs> or at least she's afraid that they would leave. So she's going to keep that one to herself. <laughs> and he's just, he's standing there like, bum, bum, bum. Aww. I think she, like, ch- chats with him, talks about stuff, like, that, or she's, like, focusing in. Um, but he seems fine, and as long as he doesn't know, it's fine. The less dad knows, the better it goes. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah, so eventually this big burly woman at the door ushers you in and is you're going in with your dad, so obviously you don't need to be checked for ID, but um, she's looking for people's IDs very, <laughs> very seriously. Yes. She's got her arms crossed and somehow still checking IDs. I think Lucia just like flashes her like most innocent smile, waves, and then like rushes in to try to get as close to the stage as possible. <laughs> Yeah. She wants to be up in it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you got terribly, terribly close. Certainly not in the splash zone, but you're not all the way at the back either. You're you're nicely in the center, I feel like. Yeah, I also feel like her dad was probably like, no. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> yeah, you're well back of the barriers. They're outlined sort of like there's signs saying like barrier starts here. You can see the glow of the mm-hmm. actual like barrier. Like it'll become more or less invisible when the show starts but like before the show you can see it kind of like glowing to mark where like the safety zone is Mm -hmm. and i think lucia's like explaining to her dad being like you know like (laughs) it's crimson signals like uh their tech like they do like a barrier and stuff like it's super standard for sages nowadays like it's not like it was back in the day where it was out in the open like it's super well protected and everything everybody's you know got a barrier protection it's fine i think she's just like repeating herself a lot (laughs) he nods along with you he still looks a little bit nervous but it's like seeing like the thing actually shimmering in front of him is like okay okay i I trust you um (laughs) although i do want to say i think in her mind part of her is curious because like crimson signal uses light technology 
She's thinking about her own abilities. Definitely too scared to try anything out, but she's like, hmm. Interesting. Um, <laughs> and as you're waiting for the show to start, you can see playing on like some of the like projections around you, there are like ads for both Rain Shadow Records, who has sponsored uh, Rhythmics for this show. You see the show is billed technically as Violence Violet featuring Rhythmics. And you see also there are some dueling like ads for Crimson Signal in other projections around the space. Hmm. Okay. Violence Violet is interesting because that is definitely not a name she's heard before. Like she knows the club went by like for uh, McNally Idol Club for a long time and then recently came out as Rhythmics. But she's like trying to rack her brain of like violent violence. Like who is? Which one is that? It's probably the Goth Kid. But would it be the Rock Girl? Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. <laughs> like she has the web. <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't have to wonder for very much longer because soon enough, the show does start. Uh, And it begins with the introduction of Rhythmics themselves, starting with uh, other members of the group one by one. They come up on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, And the last member of Rhythmics to come out is indeed Violence Violet. Okay, totally the goth kid. Got it. Got it. (laughs) Um. You do notice that the rock girl is not with them, though. Hmm. Okay. Maybe she's not in the club. Weird. <laughs> and then here comes the part where Sagittaria comes out and your your dad bristles at this like, hey, hey now, isn't that the other group from the... <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that's like... Okay, I'm kind of irritated because I thought this was a show from my school. This is weird. You, and you can see them sort of like grouping on opposite sides of the stage. Like very clearly, this is going to be like a competition style show. And he's kind of instinctively like kind of moves you back a little bit. <sighs> dad, dad, it's fine. There's a stage, remember? I, I, I know. It's, I, you, you saw that they can break stuff like pretty, pretty bad. Like, well, I guess hopefully it's strong. Like it is the number one place in the city, so... I, I hope they would have the strongest tech. She kind of like puts a hand on his shoulder, and leans in, and is just, look, worse comes to worse. I could take care of it, or take care of us at least. And he kind of looks at you like uncertain, but like he does nod eventually. And then the show begins, and we won't give a like a huge amount of recap for this because <laughs> y'all have already listened yeah. to like four <laughs> hours of that. Or what, however long the episode ended up being. Episodes? How many episodes did it end up being? Oh no. And it's all great. <laughs> but yeah, so the show goes like that. Um, see previous episode for details. <laughs> yeah, previously on Super Idols RPG. But the general thrust of it is that you, you see the two groups performing downpour together. They compete with each other. They trade blows. Diana gets knocked off the stage surprisingly quickly. And eventually, towards the end, things are starting to look like they're turning in Rhythmix's favor when Violence Violet suddenly gets popped out of her idol form. I think Lucia's eyes go wide. I think, like, in her area of the crowd, things just get so quiet. And then I think, like, people are just, like, up or yelling. I think she's yelling, too, because, like, you do not do that to an idol. That's disrespectful. Um, <laughs> and she, like, <laughs> she wants, like, charge forward to defend this girl she doesn't know. But she's like, absolutely not. How dare you? <laughs> and just, like, oh, yelling. And your, your dad definitely tries to hold you back at that. Like, he's he doesn't want you going yeah. anywhere near that stage area, even with the barrier in place. <laughs> Um, she's very tiny. I've always imagined her dad as a like, pretty big dude, so I don't think it's yeah. hard. <laughs> it's just a little chihuahua of a girl, just like... Bah, 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 bah. Again, this is very, like, Yelling. anime, like, larger person yeah. holding, like, a smaller squirming person. Like, like, literally off the ground. <laughs> yeah. So despite that setback, the group does manage to recover from that. You see this amazing display of power from Elementum as he creates this big rock construct. There was a pony earlier. You're not sure what that was about, but he seems to have recovered quite well from that. Yeah. Like, what kind of idol, like, does a horse thing? I don't know. 
<laughs> I won't judge. <laughs> And just as more members of Sagittaria get knocked off stage, and it gets more and more apparent that Rhythmix is going to win this thing, Elementum does indeed make the final move. He uses his rock golem to plow into the last member of Sagittaria, and essentially football tackles her off stage. But because this golem is so big and moving with such speed and force, it sails clean past the landing zone and barrels into the safety barrier, which causes a rippling surge of electricity through it. Like, the whole crowd takes like a big step back. Like, there's sparks that are flying from the edge of the barrier. Like, it doesn't break, but definitely like there's some like sparks and even like arcs of electricity that threaten to like hit people. Nobody gets hit, but like, it's more than you were expecting to happen is the important thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think she stands are just kind of like in shock like glances at her dad to make sure he's okay um uh he's not okay <laughs> he's horrified that that happened like even though the, <laughs> the the arcs went nowhere near you the fact that like that it even like that was a possibility uh is like mm -hmm. not okay um i think she just like grabs onto his like arm in his hand like trying to like it's okay everything's okay no um, it's not like it's, it's, they're gonna I've, I, they're gonna like kill each other out there if they, if they keep it Dad, up like this Dad, no no they won't okay I promise they won't that's like why security is here you also promised Just, that the, the barrier wouldn't <laughs> I know I know please please can we stay and finish the show okay but like let's back up like a good couple of rows okay and he starts to pull you like back through the crowd cl closer to the back of the show Ugh, fine. Um, she goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and from your disappointingly far away view, you do manage to see the, the group pull everything together and finish the show out. Um, they beat Sagittaria, and they get to finish out the rest of their set, thankfully without incident. Yeah, definitely. Because they like close with their own song, right? Yeah? Yeah. They they finish out with yeah. uh, with their own like original song and the the big flashy finishing pose at the end with Jaden shooting fire out from his hands up top and like being held by Angie and Queen Bee and then Violence Violet just in the front with her like energy sword like plunged into the ground all, all super badass like yeah I think the whole time they're performing to Lucia's surprise she's feeling it. She is absolutely into this song. Um, I think she's kind of like rocking her head, like, yeah, like into it. You know, she grew up on like a bunch of different types of music. And while hip hop and R&B is like what got her into idolhood, she's into it. Like Ren definitely had a rock stage. Um, so she's <laughs> Yeah, and like your, your parents it. even have like an, an, a wide and eclectic taste in music. There's been there's been yes. rock. There's even been like a little bit of metal. Maybe not around the younger kids, but <laughs> they do listen yeah. to some of it. Some of it when <laughs> when they're at like daycare or elementary school, and <laughs> like <laughs> they come home early and mom's just in the kitchen like cleaning dishes, just listening to the like craziest death metal of all time. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it like just like through like headphones she wears as she's like washing dishes or something. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh man, her mom's so cool. <laughs> oh my god, your mom is a metalhead. I've just, I just canonized this. My mom is a metalhead. She listens to a lot of different stuff, but she absolutely loves metal. Um, and it's her like, most black kids grew up listening to Motown, cleaning on Sundays. Now we listen to like death metal all day, every day <laughs> for Sunday cleanup. Um, yeah, so she's she is a hundred percent feeling this vibe. Um, definitely kind of like bobbing around, like listening to it. And I think at one point she like looks at her dad, like, yeah, like probably not verbalizing it, but like like her expression is just like, do you hear this? Like she's really excited. Yeah, and like now that your dad has had some time to like calm down from what happened earlier, he does have to admit that like these are talented kids when they're not like threatening to like kill his daughter. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's a fair parameter. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like between the music and the performances and everything, um, Lucia is like having a blast and it feels right in a way. Like it's super, super shady that uh, Violence Violent like was forced to de-transform, like took that big of a hit. But there's something just so poetic about like coming back from the bottom, you know what I mean? Like, 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So she's into the whole performance. And then it's over. Yeah. The group leaves the stage. Everybody starts milling out. People at the venue start cleaning up on stage. And the evening is winding to a close. The two of you find yourselves mm-hmm. out in the chilly fall night air outside of the stormlight. Lucia is just like vibrating with energy. But I think the very first thing she does is she whips out her phone, pulls out her note on her phone, and just starts typing away. She starts a list that's like, Rhythmics Club Improvement List. And she's just like <laughs> going down. <laughs> she's going down and like, her, at first she's just like taking notes of like, what did they do? What was great? Like everybody's power sets, really cool moments that they had. Like that's her first start. And then... um She's just getting that down in her mind right now so she can remember because she's going to be up all night analyzing Mm -hmm. it and figuring out where she fits in. And your your dad breathes out like, well, apart from the part where everybody almost died, I have to admit, that was pretty cool. And that part was just like for a second. You you know, that doesn't uh, that doesn't assuage my worries. Uh, I think she just gives, like, once again, her signature, like, big, innocent smile. Just like, it's fine. <laughs> Doesn't say anything. Just trying to smile it all away. <laughs> um, and he asks a kind of unexpectedly direct question, I guess. What did you say your powers exactly were again? Oh, um, well, I can make illusions, I think. Like, <sighs> I've been trying, I can like kind of bend light, like sometimes I make it like wiggle, but I've been able to do illusions. One time I actually made myself look like Teo. So (laughs) if I can do that, I can do anything. Nothing like a shield or anything though, right? Like something that might help protect you maybe? Um, I can definitely try it out, but... I have also noticed that I can make things happen. Really? Kind of. Let me explain. Let me explain. (laughs) Like, I was flipping a coin, and I was using my abilities to sort of, like... You know, flipping a coin is supposed to be 50-50, but I shifted it more like 75-25, and I was able to make it land on head 25% of the time. You sure you didn't just get, like, a hot streak or something? No, like, I I tested it out. I've done a couple of other things that um, I don't know if you would have liked. Because, you know, some stuff like making Teo stub his toe or Mm. making it like that uh, Ava can't find her favorite toys. I think it's just like... Oh, is that... Do I have you to blame for Ava's tantrum last week? Maybe. But you can't prove that. So I'm innocent. That's how that works. I guess it won't hold up in the court of law. Exactly. Mom would throw the court case out. And you know she's a judge. I, I know. And um, your mom is, is uh, has a dangerous amount of bias towards um, her own children. Yeah, that sucks for you. <laughs> Just can't win in, in Judge Gabriella's court. No, no. But to be fair, it's really hard when we're like trying to fight it out, too. Because that's when she's unbiased. And it's like... Hello? Obviously I'm in the right. Obviously I didn't do anything wrong. I'm an angel. (laughs) She'll have to make you sign an affidavit in triplicate to prove that. That's fine. I can do that. Now that I have an alter ego, I can get away with things. Uh, That does make me worry a little (laughs) bit. I don't think you should have to get away with things. You're talented enough that you can just do great things. Okay, you're not gonna, like, get me to be a good kid and not use my abilities in performances like that by flattery, but thank you. (laughs) Well, mostly I just want to hear that you're thinking about ways to make sure that you're safe out there, because that's the thing that I'm still the most worried about. Like, I told you earlier today, things were, were wild and crazy back when Super Idols first started popping up everywhere, and a lot of it really wasn't pretty, and I I don't want that for you. I promise that I'll be careful. Like I said, this other sort of ability that I'm still kind of figuring out, I think 
it's just kind of like affecting somebody's luck. And if they try to hit me, well, I guess they're just so unlucky that they miss and hit their, you know, partner. That's that's something. He, he nods, trying to reassure both you and himself. That's something. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. I practice. Actually, and she gets like a little smile. If I have your permission, I can practice it all the time. <laughs> uh, wh- what do you need my permission for exactly? Just practicing my lock bending abilities around the house. Not on you and mom. Mm, this is going to be a provoke someone. Because <laughs> you're trying to get him to do something. <laughs> I am. Um, okay. So I'm going to roll superior. Okay. It's an eight. All right. So on a seven to nine, uh, I get to choose. He's going to stumble, air, or overreact. Um, I'm going to take the air and you get a critical opportunity. And the air is, he's just like, well, uh, uh, you know, I can't say no to you. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I know your mom is going to back you up to. <laughs> um, she just like bursts into giggles in the seat. It's just like you will maybe regret it, but I won't. But you have to promise it's nothing that will actually like hurt anybody. Okay. I mean, it's not like I'm a voodoo doll. I, I mean it. I want you to focus on things that will protect you or benefit you, not that will hurt other people. And that's going to be his condition for letting you do this. Yes, Dad. I'll know. Now that I know, if something fishy goes on at the table again, I'm gonna have more reason to look your way, Luce. That's fine. This morning was all Ava's fault. You should honestly talk to her. <laughs> he laughs and, like, you like talk back and forth like that, like, joking with each other um, and just generally lightening the mood as you head back towards home for the evening. And once you get back home and you know that all your siblings are in bed and your parents have gone to bed as well, how do you finish out your night? She gets set up at her desk. I think she has like the desk light on, but the actual like bedroom light off. I think she like starts her sort of like favorite playlist to kind of like inspire her. I think it's definitely a little bit more like chill music something like a little bit more funky and like genuinely starts coming up with like ideas because she needs to figure out how to get into this idol club ASAP and she knows that she can be a little bit abrasive so she wants to play (laughs) she feels like maybe just straight up asking is not a good idea but if she can convince them there is no reason for them to say no so much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks so much to the wonderful cast member of today's episode. Lucia Moore slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez. Dialogue and cleanup editing for this episode was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. The opening and Lucia's character theme for this episode was Power by Terry Skills, and the ending was TID Till I Die by Terry Skills. All Terry Skills tracks in this episode, including the insert song, Be the Best, are used under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike license, and can be found at soundcloud.com slash beats by Terry Skills. That's B-E-A-T-Z dash B-Y dash T-E-R-R-I dash S-K-I-L-L-Z. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from storyblocks.com and freesound.org, with the exception of I Am The Violence, which was written and performed by Street Sorcery for Super Idols, 
who can be found at streetsorcery.bandcamp.com. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time! Be gay! Roll dice! An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.